Bitcoin is generally thought to be the OG cryptocurrency, having been created way back in 2009. But this is actually not true. In fact, a computer scientist named Nick Sabo designed a cryptocurrency based on blockchain technology 11 years earlier in 1998. If you take a closer look at this cryptocurrency, you'll see that it's hauntingly similar to Bitcoin. It even has a very similar name, having been called Big Gold. Considering these glaring similarities, many have speculated that Nick Sabo is actually the anonymous creator of Bitcoin. So, here's the story of Bitgold and some evidence that Nick Sabo may actually be the creator of Bitcoin. Nick Sabo was a highly educated man, having earned both a computer science degree and a law degree. Aside from this, Nick was fairly well known within the academic community for his research into digital contracts and digital currency. He even received an honorary professorship from Universidad Francisco Marroquin for his research. Considering Nick's background, it's not surprising that he eventually tried to create his own digital currency. Similar to Bitcoin, Nick wanted to create a form of digital currency that was completely decentralized. You see, Nick was not impressed whatsoever by the traditional financial system, as it is not only inefficient, but also quite vulnerable. One of Nick's main arguments against the traditional financial system is that there is too much trust involved in just a handful of institutions. Take loans for instance. First, people depositing money into the bank have to trust that the bank will lend and invest their money safely. Next, when a bank is giving out a loan, they have to trust that the borrower's credit score is accurately calculated. Finally, the lender also has to trust that the borrower will pay back the loan. Even if all of this goes smoothly, everyone has to trust that the currency itself still has value. The significant amount of trust in a handful of institutions makes the entire system much easier to manipulate. For instance, a credit score institution could lie about a person's credit score, or a bank could give out risky loans like during the subprime mortgage crisis, or the Federal Reserve could just start printing ludicrous amounts of money. With a decentralized system however, a single person or entity having too much power is far less likely. Nick's proposal to accomplish such a system was leveraging the proof of work model. Nick suggested that this model could be set up through a peer-to-peer -peer network called a Byzantine Fault Tolerant or BFT. His plan consisted of individuals around the world using computing power to solve cryptographic puzzles. The first individual to solve the puzzle would end up validating a set of transactions, and they would receive a small amount of Bitgold for their contribution. This entire process is called the proof of work model, and it's one of the most popular ways to verify cryptocurrency transactions. For those of you who are familiar with Bitcoin mining, this entire description likely sounded eerily similar. That's because the proof of work model is used to this day to mine Bitcoin and Ethereum. Many cryptocurrencies are switching over to a proof of stake model, as it's a much more energy efficient method of verification. But the simple fact that Bitcoin is still using the proof of work model shows how far ahead Nick was thinking. Despite this though, Nick would run into a major obstacle with Bitgold, which was a threat of double spending. As the name suggests, double spending is a threat that an individual could spend the same digital currency twice. For instance, a person could use some Bitgold to buy some bread at a grocery store. The person could then turn around and replicate the code behind the Bitgold that he just spent, and then spend the replicated Bitgold to buy a taco at a restaurant. This issue could easily be fixed by establishing a central authority that confirmed the validity of each transaction. But that would be counterintuitive as the currency would no longer be decentralized. Bitcoin would eventually fix this issue by leveraging block confirmations. Block confirmations consist of simply writing each transaction onto the blockchain. The more blocks that are mined and added to the blockchain, the more difficult it becomes to reverse a previously completed transaction and double spend. Double spending wasn't the only obstacle Nick faced though. Bitgold's reliance on a Byzantine fault tolerant made the system vulnerable to cyber attacks. A cyber attack is simply when a user creates a boatload of fake accounts or profiles to manipulate a network. It's kind of like the bots in the comment section that try to convince you that joining Mary Jane's WhatsApp group will make you a millionaire. Anyway, in terms of a blockchain network, a cyber attack is when a single user tries to run multiple nodes on the blockchain in order to influence other nodes and prevent data from being added onto the network. Bitcoin actually never really solved this issue. They just made it extremely expensive to conduct a cyber attack. A person's influence within the Bitcoin universe is limited by how much computing power they have. So, a person can't just go out and create a bunch of nodes for free. They would have to go out and buy a bunch of computing power. If an individual or group is able to take control of 50% or more of a blockchain's network hash rate, then they could go ahead and carry out a 51% attack on the crypto. Many smaller cryptos are extremely susceptible to this sort of attack, and it's actually rather common. 
Bitcoin could technically still be 51% attacked as well, but it would likely have to be conducted by someone like China, as such an operation would likely cost tens of billions. Anyway, Nick wasn't able to fully solve the double spending problem at the time, and he knew that Cybol and 51% attacks were serious threats. So, he would never end up releasing Bitgold to the public. But Bitgold isn't Nick's only contribution to the crypto space. Nick's other known contribution to the space is smart contracts. Smart contracts are a way to enforce the terms of a contract through the blockchain network. Generally, whenever a financial agreement is made, there is some sort of overseeing authority. For instance, with banking, the government oversees a bank's activities. The government sets minimum reserve limits and they ensure credible financial institutions. This is supposed to give depositors peace of mind and some sense of security. In a decentralized system though, there is no overseeing authority. Nick's solution to this conundrum is making blockchain technology the overseeing authority. With smart contracts, terms of a financial contract will be translated into code, and computers will ensure that the agreed upon terms are carried out. A simple example of a potential use case of a smart contract is life insurance. When a life insurance policy is signed, the terms of the contract will be coded into the blockchain. After this, computers will automatically charge the policyholder the specified amount every month, and when the policyholder dies and a death certificate is provided, the computer will release the payments to the beneficiaries. So Bitgold and smart contracts are the two primary known contributions from Nick. But the question remains, is Bitcoin an unrecognized contribution from Nick? Well, there's actually a decent amount of circumstantial evidence that suggests this, starting with, of course, Nick's background. Whoever created Bitcoin has to be extremely forward-looking, as it created Bitcoin way back in 2009. Given that Nick proposed smart contracts in 1997 and Bitgold in 1998, he was definitely capable of creating Bitcoin in 2009. Bitcoin's code is also often praised for being extremely well-developed, meaning that Bitcoin was either developed by several professionals or took years to develop. Maybe it took Nick 11 years to perfect Bitgold and turn it into Bitcoin. The similarities between the name Bitgold and Bitcoin itself suggest that they may be related. What's even more interesting though is the similarities between Nick's name and the last name of Bitcoin's quote-unquote Japanese founder, Satoshi Nakamoto. Satoshi Nakamoto's initials are SN from a Western perspective, but Japan actually follows the Eastern name order, where the last name is placed first when writing initials. This means that Satoshi's initials are actually NS. Satoshi even confirmed that these were indeed his initials in an email he sent to Hal Finney. In this email, Satoshi describes how his Bitcoin address happened to start with his initials. If we take a look at the respective Bitcoin address, we'll see that his initials are indeed NS. If you haven't noticed yet, that's the same as Nick Sabo. Not only are the initials the same, but the names even sound similar. The first syllable of Nakamoto is Nok, which is very similar to Nick. Also, the first part of Satoshi is Sato, which is very similar to Sabo. Another notable coincidence is Satoshi's birthday, which is on April 5th, 1975. The significance of this date is that gold ownership was banned in the US on April 5th, 1933, and it was removed in 1975. So, the birthday is kind of a combination of the two dates. But what's interesting though is that Nick's birthday is also on April 5th. That's definitely quite a coincidence. Moving on, we even have evidence of what seems like Nick covering up his tracks. In 2005, Nick made a blog post that described the merits of Bitgold and how an unforgeable chain could be used to increase security. At the top of the blog post, you'll see that the date of publication is December 27th, 2008. But this is actually not true. Nick actually made this post in 2005. The URL still even says 2005. So, why did Nick go back and change the date? Well, maybe he changed the date in order to cover up the fact that he basically outlined the entirety of Bitcoin three years before Satoshi himself outlined Bitcoin. Something else that's super suspicious is that Nick became extremely quiet after Bitcoin came out. Before the release of Bitcoin, Nick generally made a blog post every other week. After Bitcoin came out though, his posting dwindled to just a couple per year. Perhaps the most convincing evidence though is a major Freudian slip. A Freudian slip is an unintentional error that reveals a person's subconscious thoughts. In an interview with Tim Ferriss in 2017, Nick Sabo would accidentally say that he designed a Bitcoin and then promptly correct it to Bitgold. Oh no, I definitely go for a second layer. I mean, I designed Bitcoin gold with two layers because... And can you explain just... Despite this correction though, Nick would continue to talk about Bitcoin instead of Bitgold and he would even use the word we. The first layer is the blockchain itself, the Bitcoin we call the capital B blockchain, doing the secure transactions. At the end of the day, Nick Sabo is a brilliant computer scientist 
who was developing digital currencies and blockchain technology way back in the 1990s. His first known attempt at a cryptocurrency was with Bitgold. The official story is that he wasn't able to solve the security risks, and so the project failed. But did Bitgold really fail? Or did it just evolve into the most popular cryptocurrency in the world? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, drop a like if you guys found this video rather intriguing. And of course, consider joining our Discord community to suggest future video ideas, and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.